Hey guys, it's all here. And as we are deep into midterms, I wanted to make this video kind of going over how I study for chemistry exams and how I've studied for chemistry exams throughout my chemistry major. Now, my method for studying for exams is different from a lot of other students I know. So I kind of wanted to share that with you because I know it served me really well and it's a really cool technique and it might help you guys out as you're trying to get through your midterms for all your chemistry exams. So with that, let's hop right into it. Now, my first step for studying for my chemistry exams actually starts in the lecture and it may seem a bit counterintuitive but bear with me. And this step is not taking notes in my lectures. Now there is the caveat here where if your lectures aren't recorded by your professor, don't do this because you will just not have notes. But luckily in most of the classes I've taken in my chemistry major, they have recorded all the lectures and posted them online for us to go back and reference. So what I do is I don't take notes at all in the lecture and I just sit there and I try and absorb as much information as possible. So what you should do is don't take notes and just try and understand the material. Put in all your focus and understanding what the professor is saying, working through problems and really getting a good foundation and grasp of concepts without diverting your attention to trying to take notes at the same time. Now, my next step, which you do after you've gone through the lectures and like just listen to them without taking notes in class, is some point before the exam, I go through and I re-watch all the recorded lectures that have been posted online, except this time I take notes on them. This is also super helpful because as they're recorded now, I can listen to parts that I already sort of understand at a higher speed, like I can put it on 1.25 or 1.5 times speed. And also I can pause if I need extra time to take notes on it. And I just take very extensive notes on these recorded lectures as if I had been there taking notes the first time, except I've already seen this information and it gives me a second look at it. It lets me absorb it even more and if I don't understand something, I can just rewind, go back, go over that concept again as I'm writing it down and you just get a second look at everything. I think it's super helpful to start off not taking notes and spend your first time looking at something in understanding because when you go through the second time you're going to understand it a lot easier you're going to be able to go through it pretty quick and you can take better notes on it because you sort of know what knowledge is important and what you need to know and how it all fits in so this really all works together when you're going through the second time around to take notes and really review and relearn the material now i do recommend don't type your notes use a pen and paper I do this for all my chemistry lectures and I've never really typed notes for a class and that's because typing, you don't really have to think what you're putting on the page, you're just copying things down really quickly. And I found the physical action of taking my time and writing everything down on a piece of paper is super, super helpful for just cementing it in my mind. Adding a physical action to what you're learning in the form of writing just helps your memorization and your understanding of that topic tenfold. On top of this, especially in chemistry, writing down complex equations, writing down chemical structures, and any drawings you need to do is a lot harder if you're typing on a computer than if you can just sketch it in your notebook or on your piece of paper really quickly. After I have all these notes written down and I've watched through all the lectures, I like to go through any homework problems that were maybe assigned in a problem set earlier in the semester for that unit or anything like that and I go and rework them. Even if I've already done them before, reworking them kind of cements those basic problems in my mind. So if I see them on an exam, I'll know exactly what to do without hesitating and I won't waste time. After I've done these homework problems and stuff that was assigned earlier in the semester that I had already worked through, I go through and look for any assigned practice problems that are like extra supplemental problems that professors like to assign in the back of the book. These problems I tend to find are a bit more difficult than some of the homework problems and make you think differently because they're not something the professor made to like fit right into the material and they're more abstract and they're broader in the subject area that you're learning because they're from the textbook. So once I've reached this point where I've gone through all the homework, all the practice problems, I've written down all the lectures, this is the point where if you have any questions about any of this stuff, you go and you ask your professors. 
A lot of the times professors will explain something one way in class because they need to get through the lecture in a certain amount of time and even if they have the ability to show you different examples or explain it in a completely different way, they won't do it purely because of time. So I highly recommend going to a professor or even if there's a student in the class who seems to be doing really well in understanding the material, you can go work with other students in the class and they can help you explain things. This is also a great time to point out that study groups are a great idea and a lot of the time if you get into a study group and you go and teach the material to other students, it means you know the material better yourself. Because to teach the material, you have to know the material impeccably. And it just makes sure you have filled in all the gaps in your knowledge of the subject. Even if you don't have a study group or someone to go and try and explain this material to, you can sit there and talk to a stuffed animal and explain material to an inanimate object. And just the act of you being able to explain what you're learning to someone is like, super helpful in learning the material yourself. At this point, you always get, well, at least I always get practice exams in my chemistry classes. If not, I just go over my notes and problem sets again, but if so, I always save the practice problem for the last thing I do, maybe a day or two before the actual exam. And that's because I feel like once I've studied that much, that's gonna be the level I go into the actual exam. And I want the practice exam to be the best analog for the actual exam that I have. So I'm not gonna go do the practice exam before I've studied for the actual exam because that's not how I'm gonna be taking the exam. So after I've done all my studying, I take the practice exam, I see how well I do on it, and that's the gauge for like how well I do on the actual exam. And I can go through and fill in my gaps in my knowledge based off what I did on the practice exam wrong. At this point, if you've gone through all your notes, watched the lectures and all, it's usually just a couple of problems that you get wrong on the practice exam. And those are the trickier problems. And once you go through and you understand what you did wrong on the practice exam, you can fill in those gaps in your knowledge, understand how they kind of confused you or tricked you, and then just go over your notes more and go take the exam. A lot of the time these practice exams have similar problems to the actual exam. In these tricky problems that you find on the practice exam, the same stuff comes up on the real exam, but you'll have been prepared because you took that and you went through the effort of understanding what you did wrong and why that is the way it is. Once you've done all this, you should have a really good foundation to go into your exams and it really helps you truly learn and memorize and understand concepts for the material. I hope this study method was helpful for you. It's honestly been super helpful for me and it's my preferred study method even outside STEM classes, just going down and rewriting notes. It's a great method. I find that just the act of writing helps me learn things so much better. So if you liked the video, if it gave you some ideas on how to study, or maybe helps you study better, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.